got no respect. No respect. Now get out. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be looking at cast, crew, and audience speculations and conspiracy theories about TV production schemes, which were later confirmed to be accurate. How old are you? I am 25 years old, Mr. Cowell. All right, and why are you here, in? <laughs> to try out for American Idol. Number 10, ending on bad terms, Sex in the City. Carrie Bradshaw and Samantha Jones were a breakthrough for female friendship on TV. No, I'm fine. Oh, come on. You gotta do better than that. Sadly, that dynamic was plagued by rumors of tensions between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall, especially over salary. I'm gonna splash some water on my face and then I'm going home. And I will not be judged by you or society. These rumors were confirmed after the series finale. Pay disputes even factored into the show's end. Fans thus suspected that Samantha was written out of the revival series, and just like that, out of spite. Well, Parker later announced that Cottrell wasn't even invited to return. It was simply understood that she wouldn't be interested after begrudgingly doing two Sex in the City movies. Luckily for fans, Cottrell made an appearance in the second season of And Just Like That. Whether Samantha is here to stay may still depend on Cottrell and Parker. And have a great night. Tough. Bye. Number 9, Izzy's Tumor, Grey's Anatomy. Medical residents are known to work unhealthy hours. Apparently, so are medical show casts. Playing Dr. Izzy Stevens on Grey's Anatomy, actress Katherine Heigl was termed difficult to work with and regularly spoke out against onerous working conditions. Alex, hey, you shouldn't be out here. Dr. Burke needs to back to off, please. In 2008, she withdrew her name from Emmy consideration because she felt her role was underwritten. So the following season, Izzy was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Co-star James Pickens Jr. soon confirmed popular suspicions that this arc was written to keep Heigl in line. My hair's starting to fall out. You still look good. Izzy just happened to make a remarkable recovery after Heigl's contract negotiations. Her onset antics still got her axed after season six, but she's now more critical of her own behavior than the show. I'm so glad. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. It's like it never happened. Number eight, fake cash, Cash Cab. The fast-paced quiz show Cash Cab played to the fantasy that anyone could win big at any moment. Riders in the cab won money from host Ben Bailey based on correct answers to a series of questions. Congratulations, here's your 3,000 bucks. Many viewers assumed that contestants' winnings didn't actually come in cash. Sure enough, the dollar bills that winners flashed at the camera were props. They later received their prize money by mail checks for tax purposes. That is, if they didn't void their winnings by divulging production secrets. Congratulations, you guys. You were great. Thank you. Oh, my God. Nice to see you, man. Cash Cab was serious about its illusions. Some contestants have even defied the NDA to reveal that they were recruited before entering Bailey's taxi. But the prop bills perfectly reflect how Cash Cab is deceptive down to the title. All right, congratulations, ladies. Here's your 1200 bucks. <laughs> Number seven, sometimes you gotta go. Cheers. Carla Tortelli's abrasive personality is more endearing to Cheers fans than the show's characters. The single mother's lonely days seemed over when she married Eddie Lebeck, until he died in a freak Zamboni accident. Can't go to graduation, huh? No, he can't. What's the excuse? He's dead. This dark and bizarre twist was so removed from Cheers' tone that viewers suspected vindictiveness behind it. Eddie's actor Jay Thomas had jokingly lamented kissing Rhea Perlman on a radio show he hosted. He himself theorized that this comment got him fired. I say, let's get on with the honeymoon, eh? In 2006, a writer on the show revealed that Perlman did in fact have Eddie written off to spite Thomas. Eddie was even posthumously outed as a polygamist con man. Though Thomas claimed he meant to insult Carla rather than her actress, he should have watched his words. I'm Eddie's poor grieving widow. That's impossible. See this? Yeah? Well, see this? Number six, Leno steals the show, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. With NBC's Late Night with David Letterman considered a worthy lead-in from Johnny Carson, Letterman was poised to succeed Carson upon his retirement in 1992. Instead, comedian Jay Leto took over The Tonight Show. This sparked enormous controversy among audiences and within the industry. Let, let's see how you all feel in 30 years. As Leto had become Carson's resident guest host, many suspected a backroom deal to oust Letterman. It wasn't until the 2021 docuseries, The Story of Late Night, when it was revealed that Leno really did have a secret succession contract. Jay Leno had just signed a new deal that guaranteed Jay The Tonight Show. Whenever Johnny 
stepped down. Letterman's conflicts with NBC executives actually cinched this deal. Though Leto overcame his initial rating slump to become as big as CBS's Letterman, the two have been feuding ever since Leno's deal was just speculation. And from that day on, Jay Leno and The Tonight Show are number one. The late night crown is back at NBC. Number five, Good Guy Gordon, Hell's Kitchen. Hey, hey, hey Red Team, this is painful. Who just gave me them? Who cooked them? Gordon Ramsay is hailed as one of the most popular chefs in the world and one of the biggest jerks on TV. Especially in its American adaptation, Ramsay hosts the aptly named Hell's Kitchen with deliciously diabolical intensity. Look at me, I got one big message for you. Hey you! Get out. Many fans are skeptical that he's really bringing that much heat. He's notably more reserved on such other shows as MasterChef. True, Ramsay has a share of fuse with other celebrity chefs, but his TV apprentices assert that he's a great and patient mentor. He also has a reputation of being devoted to family, philanthropy, and fans. The caricature of his perfectionism is just an entertaining alter ego. As cranky as Ramsay does get when his restaurants lag in quality, he clearly takes his brand seriously. Hi, was your best service? Oh, yes, yes. Hey, yes. Yes. What do you mean? Number four, the puppy episode, Ellen. As a 90s sitcom star, Ellen DeGeneres was a popular figure, but also the subject of rampant rumors about her sexuality. There was intense speculation about whether she was gay and if her personal orientation would have any effect on her sitcom's character. What if I said something shocking to you? Like, my whole life has been a lie, and, and I'm really left-handed. The strict secrecy surrounding production of the cryptically named Puppy episode led many to suspect something big. Indeed, the episode followed Ellen Morgan's realization that she's gay. Susan, I'm gay. Perhaps not so coincidentally, DeGeneres herself came out on the cover of Time magazine at about the time the episode aired. Sadly, the backlash and boycotts resulted in Ellen's cancellation the next year. ABC's important breakthrough was soured by the refusal to fight for it. For the first time in my life, I feel comfortable with myself. Number three, so bad it's good TV, American Idol. It's no secret that American Idol hopefuls have mere seconds to wow scouts and producers in a series of preliminary auditions. The real mystery is how a lot of so-called singers get past that round. When I fall, the popular theory was that the producers included some of the worst auditions for comic relief. Indeed, American Idol's strange or downright terrible singers are such a phenomenon that televised auditions were arranged around that trope. She bangs! She bangs! <laughs> Oh, baby, when she moves, she moves. However, out of concern that this tradition was exploitative, producer Trish Kinane ended it with the show's 2018 revival. American Idol is popular and entertaining enough without having to publicly humiliate people. Oh, I'll tell you goodnight, close the door. Number two, playing matchmaker, The Bachelor. Romance on The Bachelor tends to be polarizing. It's also meticulously manufactured. Producers plan dates, arrange interactions, and basically keep the cast trapped. Cynics have long suspected that even The Bachelor's decisions are predetermined. Taylor, will you accept this rose? I will. Thank you. In 2018, former executive producer Scott Jeffries confirmed that contestants really are advanced or eliminated partially based on audience response. Contestant turned bachelorette Ali Fedotowski claimed that this practice extends to the spin offs. There are assurances that producers only completely control how rose ceremonies play out and that their influence on stars declines as the competition progresses. Of course, the unfair pressure placed on these courtships is well documented. Directly or indirectly, Bachelor Nation's controversial love stories give too much agency to off screen cupids. Will you accept this rose? I am thrilled to accept this rose. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Quiz Show Scandal 21 Quiz shows were popular TV programs in the 1950s. NBC's 21 was a big hit, especially for the rivalry between Charles Van Doren and Herbert Stemple. A defeated Stemple later upended public perception of the show by claiming that it was extensively staged. Then you win $20,000. Congratulations. On top of confirming that 21 contestants were given answers and choreographed for drama, congressional investigations discovered that most quiz shows were rigged. The scandal was so immense that it basically killed the genre. Jeopardy revived it in 64 with gameplay that made it hard to cheat. 
Still, after being immortalized by Robert Redford's quiz show, the 1950s rigging trend is considered one of the most scandalous TV conspiracies ever. That is, among the ones we know of. Thank you for being a wonderful contestant. What are some other open secrets in your favorite TV shows? Do you have some theories of your own? Come forward in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.